Hey, have you ever been so skilled you made a bad thing good? Have you ever let the fear of what lies in the dark envelop your very being, allowing you to tap into an endless abyss of unknown magics as the Breaking Benjamin album blares in your headphones? Well, congratulations! You might be a gloom stalker. But what is a gloom stalker? Well, pack plenty of good berries and try not to get lost, cause we're headed to the deepest part of the woods. When most people think of rangers, I imagine they think... What the fuck is this piece of shit? Which is what I thought, until I read this subclass. Hmm. This better not awaken anything in me. You see, the Gloomstalker decided to take the ranger class in a completely unheard of direction by making it, um, good. Who knew it could be that simple? In fact, it's so good it feels like a mistake. I'll explain why I have a hard time with rangers later, but in the meantime, let me gush over why the Gloomstalker completely flips the script. And it basically boils down to two words. Stealth. Archer. Sneaky snake goes dancing, wiggling and a hissing. That's right, lads, lasses, and everything in between. Break out your Dark Brotherhood cosplay and trigger your PTSD from the Great Mud Crab Wars. Because this subclass is as busted and fun to play as the good old Sneaky Boy from the lands of Skyrim. So what? We're good, right? Best subclass, hands down? Yeah? What? You, you want me to explain it? <laughs> I mean, okay, but like. Look at it. All right, well, at level one, take the Favored Foe and Deft Explorer optional abilities. Favored Foe lets you mark a creature that you're hunting, letting you do an extra d4 of damage. Yeah, it's worse Hunter's Mark. Deft Explorer is a suite of buffs you gain as you level up, getting you Canny, which gives you expertise in a skill so you can pretend you're a rogue and you learn two languages, cause, uh, trees. Second level gets us a fighting style, go archery for the memes, or archery cause it's awesome, or, oh, hey, archery would be cool. Or I guess you could go dueling if you're lame or druidic warrior for <laughs> two druid cantrips. My top favorite three spells to use as a witch. Number one, need to protect your home. My favorite thing to do is to take a deep cleansing breath and go, you got three seconds to get the fuck up out of here and two of them already gone because I can't count shit but money. Seriously though, go for the bow. We also get spell casting at this level. Ranger spells are kind of weird. They're usually not great, but the best ones, like Hunter's Mark, help you augment your attacks in unique and cool ways. Pick up the stuff that'll buff you and your allies because your DC isn't going to be high enough to get much mileage out of. Third level gets us Primeval Awareness or Primal Awareness. I mean, it's alright. Take Primal for the extra spells though. And I guess that's it. Level three's a bit of a letdown. Just kidding, shitheads, because guess what? You're a war guy now! That's right, baby, you just stepped into the beautiful world of the Gloomstalker and discovered the best way to protect nature is just gunning down anybody who messes with your trees. Oh yes, yeah, son, if you ever wonder what the outcome of a fusion dance between the Punisher and the Lorax would be, I've got the tickle for your pickle! Starting with Umbral Sight. Free Dark Vision is slick, but you've learned that black trench coats and sunglasses look best when nobody can see them. And as long as you're in darkness, you're just invisible, even to those who can see through it. Yo, what? As long as you pick your fights well, you just have permanent advantage on attacks while your enemies have disadvantage. But hold on, it gets better. Because we also get Dread Ambusher. First you get to add your Wisdom mod to your initiative, which is great and all, but on the first round of combat you gain a 10 foot addition to your walking speed and a free extra attack. If that attack hits, the target takes an extra 1d8 of damage of whatever type you did. Holy shit, man! Pick up Crossbow Expert and fan the hammer on that thing for 3 attacks at level 3! That's the same as an 11th level fighter, and as long as you're hanging in the dark, all of those attacks are at advantage. What the hell are you even facing at level 3, bandits? Shit man, these poor bastards are gonna be visiting grandpa in hell before they even realize you're in the room. If that wasn't enough, we also get to grab Disguise Self, which is super fun for roleplay, but you can also use it to turn into your target's worst nightmare before you slink into the shadows and become invisible. Creeped out by clowns? How about a shadow clown with a gun? Does that make the back of your shorts heavy? Cause it fucking should. Fifth level gets us that precious extra attack, which cranks us up to three attacks in the first round of combat, or four if you went with our crossbow kid build, and you also get the spell Rope Trick, which I think is cool as hell. It only takes an action to cast and essentially makes a little tree house at the end of a rope for you to hang out in. Your tree house is an extra dimensional space and has a window you can see through but is invisible to everyone else. However, even though attacks and spells cannot pass through the hole, you can lean out, shoot, and duck back in if you need to cheese a fight. Sixth level increases our favored foe damage to a d6, tying it with Hunter's Mark, and Deft Explorer gives us roving. Apparently in between fights, our ranger has been hitting the Stairmaster because now we can permanently add five feet to our walking speed and we have a climbing and swimming speed equal to that. The climbing speed is especially useful so we can get up to a vantage point before a fight and pick out targets, but I'm sure the swimming speed comes in useful too for hunting Aquaman. Seventh level gets us proficiency in wisdom saving throws, not flashy, but always welcome. Eighth level gets us land stride so we can tell plants to suck our stamen, and ninth level gets us a new spell. If a Disappearing sassy shooter weaving in and out of the dark, rapid fire blasting on a crossbow they seemingly haven't been reloading isn't terrifying enough, they can then hit you with the fear spell and really hammer it home. 
Another optional ability at 10th level, we're taking Nature's Veil. Now, much like the last piece of pizza or people that owe you money, you can disappear in broad daylight. As a bonus action, you can do your invisibility trick one turn at a time, and you can use this ability as many times as your proficiency bonus and get all uses back on a long rest. We also get another buff through Deft Explorer with Tireless. This lets you spend an action to give yourself 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier and temporary hit points, but you can also decrease exhaustion on a short rest instead of a long rest. Relive the days of studying for college midterms and take you a one hour power nap before chugging down that special blend of coffee, NOS, and mashed up pills you bought at the gas station because staying alert for 73 hours straight is more important than silly things like... Sanity. You know that phrase, you miss all the shots you don't take? Well, with Stalker's Flurry at 11th level, if you miss one of the shots you did take, I ain't hit a damn thing. You can just take it again. Once per turn, if you miss a creature with an attack, you can just take an additional attack as a part of that action, potentially turning a miss into a hit, which is always a good thing. If you picked up Sharpshooter, this helps negate that negative five penalty to attacks, allowing you to rack up tons of damage every turn. You stand convicted of assholeism. The proper punishment will now take place. Now, how does permanent advantage regardless of the sun sound? How would you like to never again have to worry about attacks revealing your location? Well, do I have the spell for you? All for the low, low price of 13 levels in Gloomstalker and three easy payments of $59.99, you too can become the world's greatest infiltrator with greater invisibility. That's right, attacks and spells cast with this up no longer break the spell, making you an invisible powerhouse. And if you call in the next 15 minutes, we'll throw in Vanish at level 14, letting you hide as a bonus action and you can't be tracked by non-magical means. There's a lot more you could be doing with your bonus action, but if you somehow found yourself fighting in a place with no dark corners like a desert or the surface of the sun, you can now duck behind cover to give yourself advantage. Like an asteroid or something. I don't know. I'm not an astronomist. And our favorite foe damage also bumps up to a D8, so that's cool. With Shadowy Dodge at 15th level, we can crank the volume on our Avenged Sevenfold CD, forcing your opponent to plug their ears and letting you potentially dodge away from a deadly attack. You can use this as a reaction to oppose disadvantage on an attack roll made against you, but with all your buffs already, if the enemy ever has anything but disadvantage against you, you've already messed up. 17th level gets us Seeming, which is basically a tricked out version of Disguise Self for the entire party. I love this spell, but getting it so late in the game is a little lackluster. But hey, you might as well go into world ending fights looking baller as all hell. <laughs> Hey, do you smell that? Oh, y'all smell like this to me! That's right, at 18th level, you've honed your feral senses to a degree that you can sniff out the booties of any invisible creatures within 30 feet of you and you don't have disadvantage on striking them down. I can smell your ass! Finally, our capstone is Foe Slayer. As if you needed any more buffs, this allows you to add your Wisdom mod to either an attack or damage roll once per turn. Extra damage is always sweet, but turning a miss into a hit will never not be where it's at. But let's face it, our dude don't miss. So what sets a subclass apart from the other ranger subclasses? We don't have time to break down all the changes the ranger has gone through, but in short, the ranger has had a long and very memeable existence in the 5e space. The biggest issue with the ranger is that they are far too specific to the kind of campaign you're running. In a high-risk adventure focused on survival and keeping track of food, the ranger can be an S-tier class, but take that same build and plop their unwashed bottoms in Neverwinter and their usefulness tanks way down. Well, except the Gloomstalker. The Gloomstalker somehow completely shatters their perception of rangers. It transcends memes, which may be the most incredible ability of any subclass we've done so far. This shit just slaps, man. It is one of the most well-rounded and powerful subclasses that does one of my favorite things a subclass can do, build upon itself. It also lends itself well to some insane multi-class combos with the Assassin Rogue especially, but dipping into Fighter gets us Action Surge. And looking at the wording on Dreadful Ambusher, you can trigger that ability twice in the first round of combat, meaning you can attack seven times with your hand crossbow, two of those dealing an extra D8. Sharpshooter is also a must for this sub, especially with all the ways you can make sure to get a hit off. I love this subclass and I'm only a little sad that I'm just now digging into it. I have half a mind to make it an antagonist in the game I'm DMing just to really mess with my players, but you know, we'll see. So if your favorite terrain is a pile of cigarette ashes under an overpass, you've somehow made the worst version of something fun as hell and have a pretty terrifying approach to environmentalism, guess what? You might be a gloom stalker. Hey everyone, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And please, don't forget to subscribe down below, it really, really helps me out. Right now the channel is growing okay, but you have no idea how far a like, a comment, or a subscription goes towards pushing us in the algorithm. So that's all for now, I hope you have an excellent day, and see you in the next one.